golf fans and welcome to Golfing America. I'm your host Terrence Sheehan and today we're at the Preserve in Fenton, Michigan in Arnold Palmer's signature course. I'm joined by my associate Eric Baraducci, playing editor from Grand Blanc Golf Academy. Eric? Welcome this week. We're going to start the show off by giving you a tour of the surrounding communities, then head back to the clubhouse, show you the wonderful facilities, have a talk with Tom Harris, head professional, and then we're going to play the back nine at the Preserve today. So enjoy the show. Grand Blanc Golf Academy is offering one-day golf seminars at Genesis Athletic Club featuring the endorsed training of Arnold Palmer and many, many more. It includes free digital golf swing analysis and is guaranteed to improve your game. The swing the handle training is very simple to learn and is great for golfers of all levels. This program ingrains the basic fundamentals of golf in a simple-to-learn method. The mental game with David Faraday will help you get out of your own way to play your best golf. Contact Grand Blanc Golf Academy at 694-9656 or on the web, gbga.net. Linden is located in southern Genesee County in the beautiful Lakes area. In this very scenic town, there lies an opportunity to escape from the rat race of everyday life. This historic town features Linden Mills, complete with a water wheel on Tupper Lake. The Victorian-style downtown shopping area features several gift, antique, and unique item shops. Eben Harris and Consider Warner, who were responsible for the sawmill built there in 1840, established historic Linden. The town was incorporated as a village in 1871. The name of the town comes from the linden tree, a tree of basswood origin that was found predominantly in the area. Fenton was settled by Clark Dibble in 1834 and was originally called Dibbleville. In 1837, Robert Leroy and William Fenton purchased a large plot of land and registered it under the name Fentonville. Robert Leroy built a hotel there the same year and he eventually became the local postmaster. Fenton eventually went on to become Lieutenant Governor of Michigan. The town became known as Fenton in 1863. The downtown area of Fenton has a beautiful park area where the Shiawassee River snakes gently through town. The park is overlooked by City Hall. There is an old-fashioned gazebo at the river's edge for events and concerts in the park. The Fenton area is well known for its many lakes. Lake Fenton is a summer boating location for many area sportsmen. Before or after your round at the preserve, take time to enjoy these great golf communities and much more. Welcome to the Preserve, an Arnold Palmer signature course. The Preserve, a semi-private golf and residential community, combines up north beauty with the conveniences of southeast Michigan. Covering nearly 400 acres of rolling wooded land, the Preserve was thoughtfully shaped to create a setting with enduring beauty. More than one quarter of the Preserve has been left untouched to retain its natural splendor. Its close proximity to US-23 at the crossroads of Oakland, Genesee, and Livingston counties offers easy access to great cultural attractions, shopping, and services. The golf holes at the preserve offer a challenge for all golfers and there is a tee for everyone. The stunning visual beauty and challenging holes will keep all golfers coming back for more. At the fifth hole, tees are at the highest point on the course. This long par 4 runs 75 feet downhill and plays much shorter than its 450 yards. Carry the fairway to the left and the slope offers an additional 25 to 50 yards of roll. The receptive green is benched in a hill fronted by a stone wall, wetlands, and bunkers that require precise club selection. Par here is a very good score and bogey may win a few bets. The sixth hole is a 155 yard par 3. It is the shortest hole on the course. It may also be the trickiest and most beautiful hole at the preserve. Views from the tees of surrounding wetlands and prairies are stunning. The 50-foot drop to a green fronted by a stone wall, wetland, and bunkers in the rear demands accuracy. Don't forget to check the wind. The eighth hole at the preserve is slightly uphill and is fashioned after the famous Redan-style par threes. A deep, menacing bunker set against a wide, shallow green that slows from right to left makes for an exciting hole. On the back nine, the twelfth hole is stunning. A 180-yard par three that crosses a deep ravine and stretches along the edge of a flat bluff. The undulating green is placed among stately oaks and maples. The 16th hole, a par 5 dogleg right, is the preserve's most diverse hole. With a good tee shot, the golfer is faced with a proposition. The safe route to the left of the green offers a short iron over a beautiful wetland to a rock-walled green. The heroic route allows the golfer to possibly get home in two by targeting the approach area to the right of the green. Here, a perfect shot will allow you possibly an eagle, but a probable birdie chance if you can hit the required shot. The law of averages in Murphy's Law says play it safe to the left. The 220-yard 17th hole, the preserve's final par 3, is a gem with water from tee to green. At the end of the lake is a beautiful stone wall slightly angled to the right. A play to the front left of the green is best. To reach the center or right side of the large undulating green requires a confident, solid golf shot. 
The preserve prides itself on customer service. This was evident on our visit as the staff went out of their way to ensure our satisfaction. The preserve also offers banquet facilities for any size outing. The colonial decor and picturesque rooms were most impressive and comfortable. There is a full-service pro shop offering a complete line of clothing apparel and golf equipment. Service comes first with the pro shop staff, and your complete golfing satisfaction is their goal. With Arnold Palmer's name on the course, we should have known. The preserve is an excellent facility with top-notch people running the show. We're with Tom Harris here, head professional at the preserve. Tom, I want to thank you for having us out today. Hey, Eric, it was a pleasure to have you. Golf course was fantastic as usual. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about a little bit about this clubhouse. Um, last time we were here a couple years ago, there was there was nothing here. This was built in 2001 or yes, 2000. Sir. Completed it halfway through the 2001 season. Yes. Okay. We have some weddings and outings here. Oh, just had a nice wedding reception for uh, Michigan State punter for a couple of years back, Josh Butlin. Sure. Had a nice party, uh, valet service, the whole. Uh, the whole service, which is what the preserve prides itself on, is complete service. Well, very happy with that. We had some food, it was excellent. This course opened in 2001. It's one of the Arnold Palmer designs courses, or one of their team. Right. I'm not really sure if Arnold was here to design the course. Can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I learned a lesson that too. Uh, whenever you see an Arnold Palmer signature design, mm -hmm. it means that Arnold Palmer was actually on the grounds okay. in the uh, in the building of the golf course. And uh, Mr. Palmer was here three times during the uh, building of this golf course. So um, it's one of the um, three or four that he has in this state. Um, Northville Hills down in Northville is one, and uh, the, the King's Challenge up in uh, up north, sure. and then also the Legend was the first one that I ever played. And I see a lot of the similarities here. Uh, I remember the big boulders and rocks and things up at the Legend, and we have them, you know, the same ways here or around some of the tees. So um, you know, it's a little. As I get around, because I'm always here, uh, I know that there are similarities in Palmer Designs, and uh, you know he, he makes great golf courses, or he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't be in the business. Well, that, I think that speaks a lot for the golf course facility. I don't think Mr. Palmer would put his name on a, on a facility that wasn't top notch. Mm -hmm. So I think it says a lot about the preserve and the people that work here. I want to talk about the golf course a little bit. Um, the feedback that we've gotten from golfers in the area, they have never played the course. It's kind of hidden. I know we get a lot of golfers from the Detroit area, Oakland County area. Um, let's talk a little bit about how we're trying to draw more customers to this golf course and also some memberships you might have available. Absolutely. We have um, seasonal passes is what they call those. We have singles, couples, and family memberships. We have um, six round, 12 round, 18 round passes for if you want to have a small uh, group come out, you get a discounted rate that if you want to call and check out for a six round, 12 round, or an 18 round pass. Um, we have driving range uh, practice passes uh, for the seasonal uh, seasonal purchases also. It is a, a golf course where you want to play uh, the right tees the first time out. Uh, we have a lot of people come and jump on the back tees and it's not really advisable. You want to, uh, your first trip through, you want to play the, uh, the regular white tees or maybe even before that for comfort to really enjoy the golf facility. Uh, there's a feeling that some people leave um, with their tail between their legs because uh, the golf course beats them up a little bit, but it's because they play the wrong tees traditionally. And what we'd like to do is uh, try to uh, uh, get people to play the proper tees when they play here, not above their ability to try to see the whole golf course, but to try to have them enjoy their round so they'll come back. Well, I agree with that. We, we were out here yesterday, and I was out here about a month ago, but um, today on the golf course, I played the black the back tees, but I, again, I for the first time, do not pay the, play the back tees. <laughs> um, there's some par threes out there, there's some par fives, the carries are, are tough, you don't know how far the distance is, so as Tom said, definitely play the up tees the first time playing it. Um, you talk about corporate memberships. Yes, sir. Can we go into that a little bit more? Well, we have some businesses here in Fenton that have uh, invested uh, in a corporate membership, which is four players, mm -hmm. uh, and what they do is uh, they have rules where all four can't play the same day, only two people from that membership can play, okay. but it's economical for the four people. Sure. And, uh, that's basically what we have here as membership, as corporate memberships. Now, starting in the 2003 season, we're going to move into the annual pass okay. where people can have like a one-year pass to play here. And they get all the uh, same amenities that, that the uh, corporate people do. They, uh, they can eat here in this uh, library room, they call it, or out in the main dining room. They'll have uh, driving range privileges. They'll have discounts in the golf shop. So the, the memberships um, are very, very... Uh, open. We've got lots of room for as many memberships as we can get, 
and um, we're going to find out how that rolls. We got to do a little marketing, and that's that's you know just part of the process of starting up when you're a new facility. Well, I think that'll work out very well. Mm -hmm. I hope so. If someone wants to rent the facility for an outing or banquet, mm -hmm. um, what kind of advanced time do they need to uh, get themselves? Well, at at this moment, uh, you know, probably a month ahead is good. It's okay. probably you know. Our, our hope is that it'll take a longer than that to get in as the sure. facility grows. Sure. We've got three rooms actually. We've got you know, two small ones here with uh, 36 person capacity. Um, we've done little small company things in both of those. Like I said before, we just had the wedding reception out there where it holds 196. So you know we've got rooms. We've got three rooms here, and it, it, it is versatile for holding a lot of different kinds of parties. Sure. Well, we're, we're very impressed with the golf course and the facilities. Pro shops, fantastic service has been. Second to none. That's what we pride ourselves on right there. Well, we want to thank you and the staff. Um, just a fantastic day, and, and uh, we just hope you all have a chance to come out here and play the preserve, and uh, hope you enjoy the golf. We're playing the back nine at the preserve today. Number 10 is a 381-yard par 4, pretty straightforward. There are bunkers on the left-hand side and long heather on the left. The ideal shot, middle right side of the fairway to give yourself an open shot at the green. Here we go. Okay, hit it good. I have 125 yards left to the middle of the green. You have to be careful on number 10, it's a very deep green. They do have the pins colored, red, white, and yellow for front, middle, and back. But 10 greens exceptionally deep, so I'm going to play it 13 to 15 yards further because it's back so far. Number 11 here, difficult par 4 into the wind, 449 yards from the blue tees, guarded well by bunkers all the way down the left side, it's a good driving hole. Get a utility wood out of the ferry bunker right in front of the green. Got about 30 to 40 yards to the pin. Going to try to lay the pitch wedge right in front of the green. Played conservative there, played in front of the green, went for par. Would have made bogey at worst, but if I tried to go for the pin on my second shot, who knows what could happen. It could have hit the lip, could have hit one of these bunkers. So the safe play uh, definitely paid off there. Number 12 with the preserve is a very difficult par 3. From the back tees, it's 173 yards, straight uphill. The pin is tucked on the right side of the green, it's protected. There's a front bunker with a steep face on it, and there's a sharp bank to the right of the pin off the green. Very difficult pin placement today.
your weight forward on these shots that are uphill. Sit down. Okay, pretty good. Number 13 is a fun par four. Framed by a ferry bunkers on each side of the, of the fairway. That dog leg's right. You can't see the green from the tee. So you want to aim it out over the over the bunkers with the left to right shot if, if possible. Good miss. I have 177 yards left to the middle, about 185 to the pin. A little uphill. There's a very steep bunker in the front of the green, so you do not want to be short here. short but it's putting. I've heard about hecklers but this is ridiculous. This guy over here keeps popping his head up. He won't let me putt. Oh well, we'll do it anyways. Number 14. It's uphill par 3 about 175 yards the back tees. Protected along the front and, and right side by a big bunker with a, again, steep face. So you want to make sure you fly it long enough to the left of that big bunker. Actually, short in front is not a bad leave here. Fifteen downhill, dog leg left, par four, about 400 yards. Routine from an elevated area. You know, it's a blind landing spot, but you want to aim at the right side of the left hand ferry bunker. The right edge of that, or the left edge of the fairway. Three water driver is fine. Tornado came through here a couple years ago, and you see the effect it uh, had in the trees. They're all bent severely to the to the right. Have about 115 yards left to the pin. It's a little short. It's important to be careful on 15 green. It's divided basically in between your front and back of the green. The pin was in the back level. I didn't hit quite enough club to get it back there. I left myself with about a 20 footer double breaker downhill. Number 16 at the preserve is definitely the most difficult par 5 I've ever played. It's a double dog leg to the right, 589 yards from the back tees. The, drive, the driving area is about 25 yards wide. There's a ditch and trees to the left, 
swamp and ditch to the right, a bunker. Not a lot of room to bail out. So the drive is critical here. Okay, right side of the fairway. Now on 16, I've left my drive in the right side of the fairway. So if you do that, there is an option to knock it on in two. But it's not the safe play. I mean, it's probably carry a 240 yards. There's trees, swamp. But in a match play situation, if you're down by a couple, go in the last couple of holes, go for broke, there is an option. But you got to keep it on the right side of the fairway to have a chance. I'm going to play it safe. It's about 160 yards, 70 yard layup shot. Right over the 150 stake out there. It's a blind second shot, so there's, like I said, there's a 150 stake to aim at. Or you just hit it over the big, the big bunker. I have 135 yards left, my third shot. It's over a gorge, protected by bunkers in the front. The pin's not very deep, so it's a, it's a difficult downhill shot. Some options on this chip shot. It's downhill. The grass in front of me is pretty flat, pretty short. So you could actually punt it, just get it going, but it breaks a lot. I'd rather chip it, get it out of the green. Um, it should stop pretty good, even though it's downhill, the greens are soft. Sit down. I hit it too hard. Hi. 17th of the preserve is probably its signature hole. 221 yards from the back tees, par 3. All carry over water. Protected by bunkers. The pin's up front a little bit, so you can play it safe left of the green, a little short of the green. Or you can go up the pin. If you go up the pin, you got to have plenty of club. Probably playing 230, carry over water, so. There's a couple different options. I'm gonna to try to aim it left of the pin a little bit. Front edge of the green. Come on. I made it. Worked out great. Par five, about 550 yards from the back tees. Good finishing hole. Bunkers down the left side, trees on the right. Pretty wide landing area though. Hold it. Oh, 
I think it caught the bunker. I'm going to lay up with the six iron out of the fairway bunker. Should be about 130 yards for my third shot. Bunker shot. Got about 195, 200 yards to the pin into the wind. <laughs> Over water. Not a very good leave. Can play it safe left short of the green, which I'm going, which I'm going to. I can have a chip and putt for my par. Third shot caught the bunker next to the green. Got a very uh, bunker shot. If I hit it long, it's going to the water. If I hit it short, I'm, I'll leave myself in the bunker. Not a very envi enviable position. Enjoyable. Hope you have a chance to come visit, visit the preserve soon. It's a great golf course. Great, great golf course. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, you played pretty well out there too. Uh, a little disappointing at the end, but uh, that's the way it goes. You played what? You were one over par. Yeah, it was fun. It was a tough course, and with those very conditions, difficult. I think one one over is very uh, respectable. The back tees, it's a very difficult golf course. Most players probably want to play for the white tees. Right. But if you want a, if you want a good challenge, play the black tees here, or the back tees to right. preserve. Uh, it was pretty out there today. The trees were yeah, nice. It was. Uh, a little cold out there today, but we yeah. weren't sure if we'd be able to get some good shots in. I think we have. Um, we'd like to thank Tom and the staff here at the preserve for uh, treating us very, very nicely. Yeah, Tom Harris, the head pro, he's uh, the top-notch guy. The preserve is a, it's a fantastic golf value. It's a beautiful place to come. Um, good golfer, a bad golfer. There's four different tees. So any level of play that you want, you can. the course can definitely challenge you. Uh, it's a beautiful place, great elevations. Uh, just, a, just a great... A uh, great golf course, hidden in uh, Fenton, Michigan. I would have to agree. If you're in the southeastern Michigan area, definitely get over here to preserve. It's a tremendous value, and uh, you will have a great day out here. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. This has been a production of Grand Blank Golf Academy.